What is up, guys? Thank you for coming by, checking out another one of my videos. Make sure you like it, you subscribe, and very important, you hit that notification bell so that way you know when I post new videos. This video is going to be the top five mistakes that rookies make when buying silver. So let's do it. Okay, I know for a fact when I first started, I made a bunch of mistakes. When I first started buying, I did all kinds of things you're not supposed to do. But out of those mistakes, there's five that can really, really hurt you. So I'm going to go over those five with you guys and hopefully prevent you guys from making the same mistakes that I made back in 2012 when I started. So the first one is do not overbuy. If you end up buying too much silver, more than you can afford, and you put yourself in a financial uh, strain, what's going to end up happening is you're going to have to turn around and resell it. And most of the time, when you have to turn around and resell it right away, you will lose money, okay? Not only that, it's a hassle, and it kind of puts a little bit of a mental strain on you because then you start getting worried that you might be overbuying so it's not good to overbuy. Make sure you have a financial goal and you understand exactly how much silver you can afford to buy, okay? And make sure that you don't buy into the hype. That's another reason why a lot of people that are new end up buying too much all at once. They keep reading all these articles, silver's gonna go up to $75, silver's gonna go up to $100, silver's gonna be $1,000 in two years. Don't buy into the hype. Like I said, I've been stacking since 2012. There is always going to be hype around gold and silver prices. So stay away from that. Make sure you don't overbuy just because you think that you're going to wake up tomorrow and silver is going to be $75. $75 to begin with is a very, very high number. I think the true value of silver, this is my opinion, is probably between the $20 to $30 an ounce range. That is the true value of silver. That's my opinion. Correct me if I'm wrong. Feel free to, you know, put your opinion down in the comments. But that's what I think. I think that is the sweet spot. I think that's what silver really should be at. I'm not saying it can't pass the $30 mark, but I think that eventually it's going to go back to the true value, which is around the $20 mark, and it's going to eventually hold, all right? So anyways, like I said, don't buy into the hype, $75, $100 an ounce silver. Make sure you're stacking at your own pace. So that's number one. Number two, don't buy anything you don't understand, okay? I don't know why, but sometimes you see a coin that you just like, and you're like, man, that thing looks awesome. And sometimes these sellers, especially if you're buy buying privately, or even on the big websites, you guys know the big companies, they know how to sell this stuff. They make you want it. But the problem is, if you don't understand it, you might be overpaying. And trust me, those big companies will make you overpay for some stuff. Don't think because it's a reputable company that you're not overpaying. That's another mistake. So make sure you fully understand what you're buying, especially when you're buying a lot of the numismatic coins. Okay, this is going to be mistake number three. Don't buy anything collectible. When you're first starting, buy the simple things that you do understand. When you start getting into numismatics and collectible coins and stuff like that, you're increasing your chances of making a mistake or a bad buy. Don't buy any of that stuff until you get comfortable with this community and with the stuff that's available for sale and numismatics and you understand limited mintages and you understand privies and all that weird stuff that you most likely won't know when you're first starting out, okay? So keep it really, really simple and just buy generic stuff, things that you see people like myself and other YouTube channels, those guys are buying. So it's always good to be subscribed to a lot of channels so that way you can see what the YouTubers are buying. And you know, it's also good if you have an Instagram, follow people that are in the same community. It's always good to keep yourself in the loop. That way you know what exactly to buy. But like I said, when you start buying those old coins, those numismatic coins, 
it's very, very easy for you to start throwing away your money and buying coins that are not worth as much as they're being sold for, okay? Think of it like an antique store. Antique stores have it made because a lot of that stuff, you can't find a price for. You don't know how much it's worth. They can literally sell anything in an antique store for whatever price they want because there is no way of finding out exactly how much it's worth. It's kind of the same deal. This, you got to do a lot of research and eventually you'll find out what it's actually worth, okay? So, like I said, for this part, number three, make sure you're sticking with the simple things and stuff that you actually understand and not collectible things. Stay away from all that stuff at the beginning. So, number four, don't use debt to buy your silver. Don't load up your credit cards. Don't start racking up debt just because you want to have three 10 ounce uh, Scottsdale stackers all at one time and you want to you know have it make sure if you do use credit cards I'm not saying not to use them because it is another way to kind of um, get closer to spot with that one percent two percent cash back that a lot of the credit cards offer I do it but make sure you pay it right away don't rack up your credit cards because you're gonna get hit with the interest and guess what you're going to end up paying more for the silver because that interest is going to be tacked on to what you paid for the silver. So don't use your credit cards unless you intend to pay it off right away. Don't accrue debt. It's even better if you have no debt, you can actually stack a lot faster. You get what I'm saying? So that's number four. And number five, this is the, probably the biggest mistake that a lot of uh, new guys do. Don't put all your money into gold and silver. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. Look for other things that you can invest your money in. I'm obviously a, a gold and silver stacker, and I'm telling you from experience, not because I don't have faith in gold and silver, but because it's always good to diversify your investments. Don't put all your money into this, okay? It's not a competition of who has the most silver or who has the most gold or anything like that. Make sure you're doing your research and you find something else to put your money in as well, okay? Back in 2012 when I started, I didn't know where to put my money in and I found gold and silver. I had a bunch of money sitting in an account, wasn't doing nothing for me, and I got into gold and silver. But guess what? I didn't put all of it into gold and silver. So look for other ways to invest, mutual funds, bonds, look into all that stuff. Um, whatever you feel comfortable with, but make sure you're putting your money somewhere else, not just gold and silver, especially you young guys. Make sure you find another way to invest your money, okay? Whether it's saving up for a business, uh, put it towards some debt that you might have. Don't go throwing all your money into this. And that's it, guys. That's my top five mistakes that rookies make, um, especially in their first year of stacking. And uh, let me know if this helps you. Let me know if you made those any of these mistakes. I know I have. So, yeah. Uh, and any other mistakes you guys can think of, you guys that are experienced stackers, other YouTube channel guys, leave it in the comments so those beginners could find some answers to some of their questions. It's all about helping these new guys get comfortable with silver stacking. All right, guys. So that's it. I will catch you on the next video, and I will talk to you later.